Good morning, ladies. I hope you are doing well. This is a busy season for all of us as we're preparing for the holidays, and it's been enjoyable for me to just kind of look through these hymns that we sing at Christmas. We call them carols, and yet think about their beginning and how they came to us. Today we're going to look at Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. It was actually written by a young lady by the name of Emily Elliott in 1864. She was in her early 20s. Her father pastored a local church, but you would know her invalid aunt because you sing her song, Just As I Am. What a heritage this young lady had. And as she was pinning the words, she was reading Luke chapter 2 when this psalm came to her. And she wanted to teach the children that she ministered to at her father's church about the entire life of Christ during the Christmas season. So she wrote the hymn and she had it privately printed and then they performed it during the Christmas of 1864. She then devoted her life to ministering to children and those who were less fortunate in society who lived in the rescue missions near her father's church. And she shared the love of Christ through her poetry and her hymns and the printed page. When you stop and think about her hymn, she's expressing the humility that God expressed when he lowered himself to become a mortal man just so you and I could be saved. What does Philippians 2, verse 5 through 7 tell us? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus was born in a manger, a lowly birth, certainly not what you or I would have envisioned for a child king. He came in humility for us, for people who did not and do not deserve that kind of love. And so as we read verses 1 and 2 of this song, I want you to listen to the verses and find those words that talk about this. Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found no room for thy holy nativity. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming the royal degree. But of lowly birth didst thou come to earth, and in great humility. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room in my heart for thee. I don't know about you, but it is hard for me to wrap my mind around Mary giving birth in a stable. Even if it was a lean-to, a stable, surrounded by animals, and Joseph was her midwife. When we see pictures of the nativity and when we put up our nativity sets, she's beautiful, all put together. But do we remember she's just been through a 70-mile donkey ride, labor and delivery of her first child? But she gave birth to our Savior. He loved us. God incarnate loved us enough to become a mere man and be born in a stable so that he could provide the redemption for our sins. Oh, what a savior. The third verse actually comes from Matthew 8, 20, while the fourth verse reminds us of Calvary. The foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Verse 3. 
The foxes found rest, and the birds their nest in the shade of the forest tree. But thy couch was besought, O thou Son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there's room in my heart for thee. Thou camest, O Lord, with the living word that should set thy people free, but with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn, they bore thee to Calvary. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there's room in my heart for thee. Yet ladies, how often do we complain if our bed is uncomfortable, or the Joneses have a newer home, or somebody got a newer car, or somebody got a, the privilege of a different vacation, Yet Jesus had nowhere. Matthew records Jesus' words indicate that all the earthly creatures had a place to rest except him. Does that point to you to a life of difficulty? And if his was difficult, shouldn't we expect the same? But how often do we feel forsaken or left alone or ignored when troubles to victory. Let thy voice call me home, saying, yet there is room. There's room at my side for thee. Do we share that rejoicing with others? Do they know there's room yet for them? How will they know that unless we tell them that the babe in the manger is the Christ of the cross. He's the Savior of the world. He's our Savior. We know He's the reason for the season, but are we sharing that He's the reason for the season? Will those who come in contact with us during this holiday week, will they know that He is our focus and not ourselves? Are we leaving that kind of legacy? May we join with Emily Elliot and say, Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. I hope you have a great holiday season with your friends and your family. Merry Christmas from those of us at WNAC.